DF64V is a great grinder, but it's got a few flaws. The variable grinding capability adds a lot of control to your brews, the form factor is small and sleek looking, and the magnet dosing funnel is very cool. But do these features make it worth buying over something like the Time or Sculptor, or even other cheaper grinders available right now? Right off the bat, I want to address some of the issues that people have reported with circuit boards. I actually had the same issue, which is why I have two of these grinders. The first one I got blew its circuit board. Joe from Espresso Outlet sent me a second grinder to continue with my review right away, and then organize a replacement board for the first one. So I'll be giving one of these away on my Instagram, so check the link in the description for how to enter that. As far as I know, the problem is fixed and won't be an issue for anyone ordering from now on. And the first grinder I've received has not had any issues since I installed the new board. So hopefully this assuages any doubts you might have, but I would always suggest buying directly from Espresso Outlet or Turin Grinders, as Joe is always willing to work these things out with customers. This isn't a sponsored video, and as always, I only ever give my honest opinions, but there is an affiliate link to this grinder in the description if you decide to buy one after watching this video, which helps me keep the channel going. Every grinder has its own workflow, and this one is a little different from some of the other grinders I've reviewed before. Really important, as with a lot of other single dose grinders, I always adjust the grind size setting and put beans in when the burrs are spinning already. This is called a hot start, and it helps to avoid putting too much pressure on the motor and extends the longevity of the machine. And for this grinder, it is a little bit more necessary, especially when grinding at slower speeds. I haven't had any issues with stalling or stopping when I put the beans in to grind, but at lower grind settings, I've heard that the motors can stall. So let me show you my workflow for making a great espresso. As the V in the name suggests, this grinder has variable grinding speed. Now, why would you want to have the ability to grind faster or slower? Wouldn't you just want to have it on the fastest speed the whole time to get your grinds out faster? Well, faster grinding speed actually changes the profile you get from your coffee quite drastically. As a general rule, the faster the grinding speed, the more variance of grind sizes you're going to get. At a maximum speed of 1800 RPM, you'll get more fines and more courses because the beans are being fed through so quickly that some particles will go straight through on the first pass, and others get bounced around and reground much finer. So what does this mean for dialing in an espresso? Well, if you grind at a fast speed, in my experience, you get less clarity of flavor, but more body and texture, because you kind of have a bit of a balance either side of your ideal dialed in setting. So you'll get the right timings, but some grinds will be extracted too much because they're much smaller, and some won't be extracted enough because they're too large. You'll get a less complex flavor, but sometimes for an espresso, you'll actually really enjoy that creamy mouthfeel and subtler taste. At a slower speed, you'll get more consistent grind size, and because of that, you will have a lot more clarity and a little more acidity and less body. There's one more thing I want to mention, and that is at the highest speed, this is a squealy grinder. It's not as pronounced on the 1000 to 1400 RPM that I've generally had this grinder at, but that's something to take into account. So why is variable grind speed worth paying extra for? Well, if you sometimes have light roasts and sometimes have dark roasts, or if you're switching between brew methods like you'll do filter or aeropress and then sometimes do espresso, this can help you get the most out of each brew method and bean type. It's like having multiple grinders designed for different things. Go slow when you want to emphasize clarity and faster when you want more body and juiciness. Adjusting the grind size is done with this inner ring on top. I've mostly been in the region of around 15 to 30, so there's definitely a lot of room at the lower end to grind finer, as most grinders tend to get a little bit more uneven grind sizes over time due to wearing down of the burr blades. Some people in my Instagram have asked me how much seasoning you have to do with these burrs, and by this I mean do you have to put a lot of coffee through the grinder before it gets more consistent results? And personally, I haven't noticed a big change since getting them and probably putting around six to eight kilos through this silver one here. I think if seasoning is necessary at all, it should be done in the factory. It shouldn't be the user's responsibility to put 150 pounds worth of coffee through their grinder before it starts to make good coffee. When I look at the burrs in a minute, I'll talk a little bit about why I think this grinder doesn't need seasoning at all. On top of that, it has these familiar bellows that blow your grinds out so you don't get too much regrinding of beans, and you get very, very low retention, almost nothing left inside the grinder if you give the bellows a good four or five puffs. I generally just press on it throughout 
the grinding process. For me, the best unique thing about this grinder has to be the magnetized funnel. This is an excellent use of magnets, which you already know I love having in coffee gear. To get rid of any coffee left in the chute, you can just pull them off and see directly to the base metal. No pulling apart with a screwdriver, so there's no coffee getting stuck in this chute. This is really great, and I hope other grinder manufacturers take notice because this is a perfect application for the job. And after I've ground my coffee, my favorite thing to do is hit it on the sides like this. Wow. Now, when we take a look inside the grinder, we see a familiar architecture on the burrs. Now, I'm not an expert on this kind of thing, I'm just a home coffee lover like you, but this architecture is a lot more familiar to me than something like the Sculptor, which patented a new style of burr that I found was not geared towards clarity like a traditional flat burr. Now, you might have noticed that these are black rather than the silver of most stock burrs and the rose gold of SSP burrs, which I've just put into my DF83 and we'll do a video on soon. This is called DLC coating, which stands for diamond-like carbon, and it's actually the first burr I've seen to use this technology. It's incredibly valuable for a home user because it helps to maintain the hardness and sharpness of the burrs for much longer than other coatings, and hopefully this will mean this grinder will last a really, really long time without needing replacements. The grinder does come with a little RDT spray bottle for giving a quick spritz on your beans before you put them in the grinder to reduce static. Some of you have asked me before if I RDT, and as a general rule, I prefer not to. I've seen grinder burrs get worn down, and I'm not sure if this is because of RDT, but I'd rather not take the risk. The grinds tend to stick to the body and gather around the bottom of the grinder, in part because of this dosing cup situation. The dosing cup is separate from the main grinder body, not like the prongs on the DF83 or a magnet like on the Time Wars Sculptor series. To me, this is the weakest part of this grinder. It just feels like a bit of an afterthought and the little wooden podium that the cup sits on moves around a little bit sometimes, so this will encourage those flying up grinds to gather around the base. I definitely think that there could have been a much more elegant solution to allow you to grind into a portafilter, which I generally prefer, or to have a dosing cup position that reduces the amount of grinds that end up on the table. Now to talk about the price. They're currently on Espresso Outlet for around 600 US dollars, which is a little bit more than the Time War grinder from its Kickstarter campaign that I did a review of recently. This $500 to $600 price point is quickly becoming the sweet spot for home espresso grinders. The DF64V is definitely a strong competitor here. I love the espresso I'm getting out of this, the build quality is very nice, and the workflow is comfortable aside from a little bit of extra cleaning up of stray grinds, and the size of it means that it will fit with almost any setup. There are also very few other grinders with variable grind speed at this price, which makes it much more versatile grinder for different beans and brew methods. I did a review of the Sculptor 078S which you can click here to watch now, and if you want me to do a comparison video of both of these and maybe one or two other competitors, like this video and tell me which grinder you'd like me to compare it with in the comments. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end, you lot, and I'll see you on the next one.